Painted Pony is, uh, I feel after the last uh, talk, I should go through our uh, financing arrangements, but uh, we'll try to keep that to a minimum. <laughs> uh, we, we had a CFO named jo Joan Dunn. We called her No Debt Dunn. Uh, and we, uh, as Keith said, for our first kind of seven years of our existence, we uh, were very debt adverse. But as you get into a development phase, which we are, and we're growing very rapidly, um, then you start taking on uh, debt prudently. And, and we entered 2015 with no debt on, on the balance sheet and uh, are using that as we grow very quickly. Uh, so current production, we're over 180 million a day or over 30,000 BVs a day. Uh, very easy math, we like easy math. So 100 million shares outstanding. Uh, our, actually our stock's up pretty good today. So we're over $850 million market cap. And, Good volumes every day, so even the uh, high high speed traders, the flash guys, uh, trade our shares, and so over a million shares a day, uh, and and debt at 173.6 million at the end of last quarter. At year end, we should be around 215 to 220, um, and on a 325 million dollar line that will be renewed in the uh, in the spring at a much higher number, we believe, because our production's up from 50 about uh, 15,000 BUs a day when we did that line to over 40,000 BUEs a day. So if you look at the map there, the, the, our, our land sits to the, the north end of the green banana we call the Montney Trend. It crosses Alberta and British Columbia. It's the best gas play in North America. Sorry for you Americans here, but uh, uh, just because of our low dollar and low royalty structure, it, it out eclipses even the Marcellus and the Utica in, in the US. Um, we're, we're on a rapid growth uh, phase, as we said, from about uh, 15,000 BUEs a day last year to over 100,000 BUEs a day will be in 2019. Um, if you look at the pipelines there, the pipelines are the red lines there and they cut right through our property and, and uh, we deliver both into Station 2, which is at that Y point there, or also ship gas into ACO. As of last Saturday, we're doing about f uh, 45 million into ACO. And we actually sell some gas directly to Sumas or the Huntington hub at the BC uh, Washington state border. Uh, we have the fourth largest gas reserves in Canada. We'll show you that on a chart here shortly. And our strategic advantage is that uh, of any publicly listed company, I should qualify that. Um, and uh, with the gas, we also have liquids and uh, and a varying degree of liquids depending on where we drill on our property. We're all in the Montney, all in BC, a very simple uh, company. Our assets all sit within a 20 mile radius of, uh, of each other up just north of Fort St. John. So here's our growth uh, trajectory. Uh, we'll be 40,000 BUEs a day. This is our uh, very rapid growth this year and we'll average over 46,000 next year and actually around uh, over just under 60,000 BUEs a day <coughs> as we bring on our additional plant capacities. So here's our five-year plan. You can see the little pony climbing the mountain there. Somebody said he should have climbing ropes on him, but uh, he's, uh, he's going pretty hard right now getting up that steep curve. Uh, we started, uh, our plant came in ahead of schedule. When have you heard that? It was under budget. Uh, this is built by Altagas, our strategic partner. It's a hundred million a day plant. Uh, I think uh, if you ever you're driving up in that area, go take a look. It's a pretty massive and, and very well made plant. Um, and we'll, we're going to twin that in, in uh, 2018. Uh, so we'll have another 200 million a day coming on. And that's what helps gets us to the uh, over 600 million a day uh, in 2019. We also have some dry gas plant facilities that we operate ourselves, um, and uh, we'll be expanding those along, along the way as well. But you can see the rapid growth there. Um, people asked us, why are you growing so fast in such a tough environment? And I said, because we can. And you should ask the other guys why they're not. And uh, it's partially is managing that debt. And my philosophy on debt is, is, is to make sure you only take debt on when you're uh, in a de true development scenario. And also, your debt should be at the lowest in the best, best of times, not at the worst of times. You should actually uh, have your debt to cash flow uh, very low as in, in good times. Because as soon as that commodity price drops, your debt to cash flow doubles, triples. So looking at that, here's our growth plan. So the green bars are, uh, as everything is, that's the cash flow. And that's after everything. The gold is, is uh, what we're sp spending every year. 
And if you look at 2019, you see that we're not even spending cash flow and still growing uh, very dramatically. Uh, if at any point, and we've tested this a number of times in our models, is if we just stop drilling and just try to hold our production flat, it's about uh, two thirds to 70% of our cash flow is all we need to, to keep, keep production flat. That tells you it's a real business. Um, we should actually show earnings in 2017. When is an oil and gas company that's growing rapidly showing the earnings? Not very regularly. A lot of them never show earnings. So he mentioned hedging. We are called what we call super hedged. And if you look at uh, just the, the first bar there, we were 54% hedged in, in Q3 that we just got out of. But Q4, we're actually, we had more hedges in place for Q4 than we had production in Q3. And we went to our banks and said, listen, under this model, we want to hedge on our forward production, not just our current production, because you're growing rapidly. And if you can't do that, you get, you get wedged uh, down to a very low um, uh, hedging ability, and, and you can't protect your balance sheet uh, during the rapid growth period. So we, they said, that sounds like a good idea. Maybe more guys should talk to us about that. So we were allowed to hedge uh, about 70% of our, of our growth projected production. And you can see through 2017, we're very well hedged. And uh, as we roll out our 2018 uh, production profile, we'll be allowed to hedge that uh, up to that 70% mark as well. So there's our land up in Northeast BC, the uh, Alaska, or sorry, the, uh, this is the pipeline takeaway. That brown line is the Alliance pipeline, but it kind of parallels the Alaska Highway. The green line there is a royalty change line, and all our lands land west of that. So we get a $2.2 million royalty credit for every well we drilled, and we pay a 3% royalty during that period. So the company's, the total corporate royalty right now is only 2.5%. And that's what the kind of thing that gets you way ahead of the Marcellus guys, where they're paying 15 to 20 percent uh, royalties. And we also pay everybody in Canadian dollars. And, and when the dollar collapsed, that's good for us because uh, all our fees. And the, the oil and gas industry in Canada is quite self-contained. We're not relying on buying things from the U.S. Um, so we benefited from that as well. Our all-in drilling costs now are, are uh, we budget about 4.8 million. That's for drilling, completing, and equipping and tying in on a pad. And that's one of the lowest in the industries. And actually, in the last uh, six months, we've uh, continued to beat that number. And we'll come up with a new number here with our budget in November. But pipelines. So if we look at the pipelines there, those red lines are very important. Those little black uh, little turtles, they look like. But they're gas plants. And that's our gas plants we produce, too. And that line is called T North. And, and we sell to a place called uh, Station 2 at the Y point there. But we also ship gas out to the east there along through a place called Sunset Creek. And you see the purple line there, and that goes into ACO. So we've got, uh, as of Saturday, we were, no, a week ago Saturday, we were uh, starting to sell 45 million a day directly into ACO. We sell most of our gas into Station 2. And uh, we also sell, as we mentioned, about 18 million a day now into uh, Sumas. Uh, what we visualize is having diversity of market, and that's very important to, to, from a thing we call anti-fragility, which Mr. Taleb will write about if you want to re read his books. Um, just making sure that you can make it through tough times, and actually tough times makes you even a better company. And we certainly have proven that over the last uh, two years here. T takeaway capacity expands in, in 2017, so we have plenty of takeaway capacity for our production, even though it's growing very rapidly. And that's because we have both a five-year plan, but we also have a 30-year plan. And uh, I'll be dead before the end of that, probably, but uh, my kids will hopefully still be alive and own some painted pony shares. Um, but they, uh, it's very important to, to think long-term when you're dealing with gas, because you've got to have long-term takeaway. You've got to build these plants, and they take a long time to, to uh, pay out. Uh, reserves, uh, 4.6 TCF. Uh, again, the largest in, in, in Canada, our fourth largest in Canada, publicly listed companies. Large asset value, which, uh, as I said, our capital market cap is about to 8 point, uh, 850 million with a NAV of over 2.9 billion. And a ridiculously long reserve life index. There we are against, uh, so we're just a little smaller than in Canada, bigger than Pado, uh, Birchcliff, Arc. Uh, so the three public companies bigger than us are Termaline in Canada and uh, uh, C and Q or Canadian Natural. Type curves, just a quick, and we're running out of time here. 
but if we look at the type curves, we've, those, those curves indicate how much that well will end up producing that's uh, in millions of cubic feet on the left. And we have a very low decline, about 35% on that upper type curve. And that's when we went to our parallel paired open hole ball, ball drop system, which we have a great video on, the, on our website that shows how ball drop systems work. Um, and we changed from a 7.5 BCF type curve to a 15.5 BCF type curve. And all that, for, uh, meanwhile, our, our costs were dropping. So I think we've hit most of those points. And I will be around all day. And, and uh, Jason, where's Jason? Jason, wave. He's our IR guard, and he'll help answer any questions you have. But thanks again for inviting us. Lots of research on us. There's the, our analyst, and of course, Keith, Keith writes the best uh, investment letter. I really do like his stuff, and he does put it in uh, some very plain language for people. So that's great. Thanks.